Today for Mousetrap Monday, I'm going to explain why an episode of the Antiques Roadshow that featured a mousetrap collection was completely wrong and the expert appraiser really didn't know what he was talking about. Now quite a few YouTube viewers pointed me to this episode. It's available on YouTube if you search Antiques Roadshow Mousetrap Collection. It's from an episode they filmed in Virginia Beach. I do enjoy that show, but I can't understand why they got this one so wrong. Basically, it had several mousetraps. I pulled all those mousetraps out of my collection. They're all very common and pretty low value. Here's the examples that pretty much match all the mousetraps in that episode. Now, unless you're constantly buying and selling mousetraps, you might not be familiar with the prices. Some can be very high, worth several thousand dollars. Oftentimes, it's tiny details that make the difference. For example, these vintage cat-shaped mousetraps are highly sought after by collectors. If you have one that's green, red, or yellow, they're worth between two and $500 in today's market. But if you have a black one that's so rare, it's worth over $2,000. So tiny details like different labels or the colors of the traps can make a huge difference on price. Also, the expert appraisal mislabeled one of the traps. He called this one the delusional, but actually it's called the delusion. I know that doesn't seem like a very big deal, but it shows me the expert appraiser doesn't have specific knowledge of mouse traps, but just general research. And based on that, he gave an appraisal that's way off. I'll go through this trap collection one by one and show you why I think that's the case. Now the first mouse trap that they featured in this episode from the group was very similar to this one. The collector explained he discovered his example in an old house, which can be very exciting finding a hidden time capsule, something that hasn't been seen for many years. It must have caught mice over the years. They've rotted inside. It was in pretty poor condition. Mice have chewed on the wood. It was rusty and it didn't have much of the label. Now the price of the mouse traps depend on condition, if they're worn out, if they're chewed up or in perfect condition, but really most of the value is in the label. The label tells you where it was made, who made it, and you can date it to the time period. This has much of the original label, which is pretty surprising because the details down below say once you catch a mouse in it, you dunk the trap in water to kill the mice, and that pretty much ruins the label. So if you still have the paper label, it's worth much more. In the episode, not much of it was remaining. I know it's similar to this one because the metal was painted blue. Now when you're looking at value, there are mouse traps that could be worth over $1,000. If it has a rare label showing it was one of the first ones ever made like this one, collectors are gonna go crazy. But the reality is most of the examples I see on eBay, online auctions, and other places are in pretty poor condition, they're rusty, they have holes in them, and they don't have the paper label. That makes them not worth very much. Typically, you pay around $20, sometimes up to $40, but not much more. If they do have a label or part of a label, that increases value, and those sell for between $50 and $100 usually. This one, I'd value it around $40. It's in pretty poor condition and a common model with a paper label that's kind of torn. It's only partially there. So the mousetrap in the episode, I value for no more than $30, usually selling for around $20. The next mouse trap that they featured is called a toy wheel and cage. It's called a toy wheel because the mouse can run on an exercise wheel after they're caught with that spring loaded door. Now this is a pretty cool trap. It's from the late 1800s up to the 1930s. This example here is identical to an advertisement from the 1930s where back then those traps sold for $4.90 per dozen. They were mass produced and there's quite a few on the market. Just last week I saw one for sale on eBay so I bid on it and I won it for $17.50. So that's pretty low value for an antique mousetrap. It's so common, I actually have several of them in my collection. There are many examples that are from the 1800s and much more rare and worth a lot more money. Some of the earliest examples like this one could sell for well over $1,000 each, but not these examples. They're so common, like I said, less than $20 for that trap. Here's another mouse trap from the group. It's a weird mouse trap, they called it. It's basically a lid that fits on a canning jar. There are spikes in there. That way when the mouse squeezes through, they get poked when they try to get out and they're trapped inside the jar. Now the reality is this doesn't have a label. It's a very common model. I bought this trap in an antique mall for $10. Now if it had the label like the old Tom mouse traps, they're worth quite a bit more, maybe $50 in good condition, possibly more but these old canning lid jars with the spikes just aren't worth a lot of money. Actually, the jar is probably worth more than the mouse trap. Here's another mouse trap from this group. It's a more modern version from Germany called the Capido. It's based off a very old mouse trap invented by Carl Bender from Germany in the late 1800s. It's a great mouse trap design, but they just don't have a lot of value. 
This one I bought on eBay for $65 and that's because it came with the original box. The more modern versions just aren't worth a lot of money. I even overpaid I think. Some of the older mousetraps, the original versions are worth a lot more. Everything depends on condition and age, if it has a label, but this one doesn't add a lot of value to the group. Now the final mousetrap that they featured on the episode was very similar to this. It's called a deadfall. It has heavy weights that drop down and squish the mouse. Now the one featured had three and this one's a double, but that doesn't affect the price too much. There's many different variations out there. They're pretty common and a mousetrap collection wouldn't be complete without a few examples. But assigning value to these traps is pretty tricky, mostly because each one is handmade and unique, one of a kind. So it really depends on age, condition, and style, and how much the mousetrap collector wants to pay, and how much other mousetrap collectors want to bid against it in an auction. Now I had a bidding war with this one, and it went up to $80. I put the value on this group of mousetraps at best between $200 and $400. You just never know, maybe mousetrap collectors will go crazy and have a bidding war but they're not worth that much money. Definitely not worth $1,500 as the appraisal in the Antique Roadshow went for. I don't know if they were just inflating prices for ratings or they didn't have knowledge of the specific details. You could easily find mouse traps with different labels worth a lot more money, but not this group. On this channel, I test out every mouse and rat trap I can get my hands on. I have a collection with well over 2,000 mouse traps. Here's just a few examples. I have videos on each one of these styles. If you haven't subscribed, please consider clicking that button. That way you won't miss the best videos on how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers.